There are many misconceptions about writing. What is viewed as a glorious profession is more of an ignored pastime that people don't understand. During 2020, people decided to finally write that book that they had been putting off for years. In response, there was a large community of people claiming the title of writer, and if you did succeed in finishing that project, good for you. Congratulations, you are a writer. But here is the truth of being a writer. It is a lonely and boring profession, trying to write while kids are running around and a spouse is asking you about a bill or to empty the dishwasher isn't going to work. There is a time and a place for this activity, and that is where people think it is a vacation at work. Some writers wake up hours before the rest of the household and take advantage of the quiet time. Others have a place to go where they are able to be left alone. Some people become hostile about this, thinking that the writer is just getting away, while they have to deal with the real world. All of this goes through the mind of the writer while they sit in their chair and try to put the words in the right order on the page before them in hopes that there will be a payoff later for their work. For me, there are a handful of things I need in order to have a productive day in writing. An empty house or the cabin out back, coffee, a chair that isn't too comfortable, a computer or a typewriter to work on, the story running through my head, perhaps a snack sitting on the side in case I become hungry. It's not much. Some people are paid by the hour to sit in a cubicle and do a similar job. However, I get to write what I want instead of TPS reports. While most writers tend to be introverts, there is the sales aspect of writing that most of us fail at. We don't like talking to people, we are embarrassed about our work, and we would rather talk about anything besides the book that we wish would sell. Promoting a book feels dirty, like an Amway salesperson trying to get you to sign up for their products. After all, most books, except nonfiction, are lies, and selling lies just seems wrong, even if it's a really good lie. What glory comes our way is in short spurts that we barely notice until after it's over, and we are stuck trying to cling to it long after it is gone. The next book, that'll be the winner. That will be the catcher in the rye that people will never forget. Of course, it is not, and we continue on. We go to our day jobs where most people have no idea what we do with our spare time. While others are out drinking and living their lives, we type away creating the lives of other people that only live in our heads. Sometimes even those people, the ones we make up for ourselves, don't appreciate what we do and we kill them out of spite. The death of a character is possibly the one case of murder that will never be prosecuted and the writer knows it. Creating is the glorious stage of the process, then the real work begins. Editing. Editing some more. Editing again. Rewriting. Finally sending it to an editor, only to learn you have to start over. The final product will never be perfect. You just have to accept it, as it is, and live with it. It's like an ex that you spent your time with, and the only way to get over them is to move on to the next fling. The story sounds good. You fall in love with it, but as time goes on, you find the flaws and realize, perhaps, this isn't the story you thought it was going to be, and eventually, part ways. Writers are whores for the next story. Some, I might say, are the porn stars of the writing world, pumping out several books in a short period of time, flooding the market for a few years, then disappearing into the unknown. It is an odd life, one that most people can't relate to. Every writer is different. Each has their own habits and quirky tics. But at the end of the day, we all have one thing in common. The desire to tell a story that needs to get out regardless if anyone else reads it. To write without an audience, the way that every book starts, is the art itself. To the writer, nothing else matters.